Hey there guys, how's it going back with another video? So, I received a comment on one of my recent videos that I made about Terence Crawford, where I was talking about the narrative of him being pound for pound number one. And uh, I received a comment on one of them videos, quite an interesting comment that made me think. And the comment was, make sure you keep the same energy when Crawford fights your boy Josh Taylor, with a couple of laughing face emojis and a couple of you know, childish little symbols. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure what the implication was from that comment. I don't know quite what this individual was driving at with that comment. I don't know what it is they were implying. I mean, make sure you keep the same energy when he fights your boy Josh Taylor. I, I, I'm not quite sure what he means by that comment, but I digress. The comment itself, whatever the implication was, it kind of made me think about the prospect of that fight, because the more I think about it, that is a fight that I do think has a strong possibility of happening in the future. Now, one fight that everybody is um, discussing at the moment, and the fight that there's a lot of demand for, of course, in the welterweight division, is the potential unification between Crawford and Errol Spence. You know, that's obviously the fight that is the natural one to make. However, I don't really see the need to talk about that fight, and the reason why is because personally, and, th and this is just my opinion here, I don't see that fight ever happening, okay? I think that that's going to be one of them fights, and I hope that I'm wrong. I hope it does happen. I just personally don't see it. I think that Crawford versus Spence is going to be one of them fights that's teased and talked about and discussed and argued over, and is going to have fanboy wars and stuff like that, and I think it's going to be... A, a similar situation to what we saw with um, AJ versus Wilder. It's a fight that's never going to happen. It's a fight that by the time it does get round to materialising, one of these guys is going to lose. And um, yeah, the fight will lose its viability and whatnot. But in regards to Josh Taylor potentially fighting Terence Crawford, that's a fight that I actually think is more realistic. That's a fight that I can genuinely see being made sometime in the next couple of years and there's a couple of reasons for that i mean first of all um, josh taylor right now is um in the process of attempting to become undisputed 140 pound champion um he's halfway there i mean he's unified two of the belts and if he can get past jose ramirez assuming they make that fight and again that's a lot easier said than done i mean ramirez is no um, you know, that's no small task, you know, he's not a bad fighter himself, but um, the likelihood is if that fight does happen, Josh Taylor will be the favourite, but again, it's it's not a foregone conclusion, but assuming that happens, and assuming Josh Taylor does become um, the undisputed champion at 140, I think it's pretty inevitable that Josh Taylor will move up after that, and if he does move up, um, the fact that Josh Taylor is affiliated with top rank, and, um, you know, the fact that Crawford is basically top ranks, um, you know, one of top ranks hypes, basically, you know, one of the fighters that top rank really gets behind. I think there's a very, very good chance that top rank would want to make that fight. Because let's be honest, former undisputed one foot 40 pound champion versus former undisputed 140 pound champion. That's a great fight in terms of how it would look on paper you know, they would be able to really sell that fight. And it's a fight that I would really get behind. I would really, really look forward to a fight like that. And I think that Josh Taylor, um, when he does ultimately move up in weight, will really see what he's made of. Because as great as he looks um, so far in his career at 140, um, if he moves up to 147, we'll see how good he really is. Like, we'll see if he can hang with the big boys, so to speak. So... Let's discuss it. How would that fight go? And and would any of you guys give Josh Taylor a chance of beating Terence Crawford? And bear in mind, if that fight does happen, it won't be for another couple of years. And Terence Crawford, I believe, is... How old is Terence Crawford now? Is he like 34? He's definitely at least 33. I believe he's pushing 34. So in a couple of years' time, Crawford will be 36, 37, and uh, will probably be on the slide. Whereas Josh Taylor is um, just approaching his 30s, so he's pretty much at his prime right now. So if this fight does happen in a couple of years, and, and Josh Taylor's had time to move up in weight and adjust to that division, it'll be a really, really big fight, you know, assuming neither guy loses before then. 
And would would you guys give Josh Taylor a good chance of winning? So let's discuss it. So Terence Crawford and Josh Taylor do have one opponent in common who is worth mentioning, and that is of course Victor Postal. Now Josh Taylor fought Victor Postal. I believe it was his thirteenth professional fight. So he fought Victor Postal very, very early in his career, and it was against the very seasoned, experienced uh, former champion in Victor Postal, who still had a lot left. Victor Postal, of course, then went on to give uh, Ramirez a very tough fight, and a lot of people thought he beat Ramirez. So, I mean, definitely the, the version of Postal that Josh Taylor fought was was clearly a uh, seasoned, in shape, prime. Victor Postal, who had a lot of experience, who only had one loss, which was to Terence Crawford. So at uh, the stage of, of Josh Taylor's career that he was at when he fought Victor Postal was incredibly ballsy. Um, you know, to, to fight a guy like Postal in your 13th professional fight, you know, a former world champion, a guy who's seasoned, a guy who's um, still at his prime, that that's a very, very um, difficult challenge. And Josh Taylor, of course, had a lot of problems in that fight. You know, Postal gave him some issues behind a jab. Uh, Postal did a lot of holding and mauling. Uh, he also was quite effective with the body work too. So early in that fight, Josh Taylor had a lot of problems and he had to adjust on the fly. And once he adjusted to that fight, once he uh, figured out the pattern, once he was able to avoid the jab and get his own shots off and work up close... He started to dominate the fight, and he ended up dropping Victor Postal, who's got an incredible chin, and um, dro dropping him legitimately too in the 10th round, and winning the fight clearly on points. Now, um, Terence Crawford, of course, a couple of years prior to that, he fought Victor Postal uh, when both guys were undefeated 140-pound champions, and that was, I believe, Postal's first unification fight. And um, it was a, a terrible fight. I remember watching it live. And I haven't even rewatched that fight. But watching it live, it was really, really poor. Um, Crawford was incredibly negative. He spent a lot of the fight pot-shotting and running around. And Postal was just kind of following him around the ring, you know, fighting to the same pattern. And I thought it was a very negative and very um, overly cautious performance from both guys. It just wasn't a great fight. You know, it was a real clash of styles where... Both guys really um, stunk the joint out and didn't come to fight. And uh, there was a lot of, like, again, a lot of mauling in the fight. Um, you know, Crawford was credited with knockdowns, which weren't real knockdowns. You know, he was grabbing Postal behind the head and pulling him to the canvas. But defensively, he did a better job than Taylor did. You know, Taylor got hit a lot easier in the early stages of his fight against Postal than uh, Crawford did. But that's to be expected, because like I said, Taylor fought Victor Postal for his 13th professional fight, so he was still very inexperienced at that point, you know, still just a prospect, whereas Crawford was already a seasoned world champion with over 30 professional fights by that point, so to me, Josh Taylor beating Victor Postal when he did was a lot more impressive than, you know, give, give, given, taking the circumstances into consideration than what Terence Crawford was able to do, you know, beating Postal in the fashion that he did, um, you know, with, um, you know, the, the way that he did, you know, being very negative and, you know, with, with being credited with false knockdowns and stuff like that and, and doing so when he was a seasoned champion. I think that it was a lot more impressive for Taylor to take on Postal and do what he did. But that's not to say that that proves that Taylor's a better fighter than Crawford. Of course it doesn't. I mean, you have to take into consideration their entire careers. I mean, Crawford has looked pretty good in other fights. You know, he has had some impressive knockouts. For example, he knocked out the likes of Jeff Horn and uh, Igus Kavalowskis, who are quite tough and durable welterweights. So you have to take all that into consideration. Again, we know that Crawford is legitimately a 147 pounder you know he's proven his chin at that weight he's proven his power at that weight and we don't know if Josh Taylor will have the same chin or the same power if he moves up in weight of course what we've seen so far he's shown an incredible chin at 140 I mean Josh Taylor was able to take punches from Ivan Baranchik for example and barely blink uh, he was able to take punches from Vic from um, Victor Postal, he was able to take punches from um, Regis Progre, who of course is a, is a monster puncher, right? a guy with one punch knockout power, so 
Josh Taylor has definitely proven his chin and durability at 140. We just don't know how it would look at 147 because some fighters, when they move up in weight, they're not able to sort of carry the power or the strength with them. So we don't really know. But um, judging by, again, the way that both guys fought, you, 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 look, at, you look at the way that Terence Crawford fights. You know, he's a switch hitter. Um, he, he's a guy who is ambidextrous. You know, he, he hits just as hard with his right hand as he does with his left. You know, throws some very, very powerful hooks and uppercuts from weird angles. You know, he's able to catch you off balance. He's able to catch you cold. Like when he fought Amir Khan, he was able to drop him very quickly in that fight. And he, he's a fighter who is very ungamely, Terence Crawford. If you look at the way he fights, he's got a very, very unusual and unorthodox style. And I can see him being a, a guy that's very difficult to look good against, even if you're able to beat him. But, um, you know, he's shown a great chin, shown very good power. Um, he, again, he's very awkward. I think defensively, though, I think that he's overrated. That's the thing I've noticed about Crawford is he gets hit a lot in fights. Right? I mean, if you look at the Amir Khan fight, he was getting pieced up in that fight. Okay, the hand speed was giving him problems. The the Igus Kavalowskis fight, he got hit a lot in that fight. You know, he, was, he even got knocked down. Um, you know, he, he got hit a lot against um, against Brook, and he got hit a lot against. Um, I mean, even against Postal, he got hit a lot in that fight. It's just that the commentators weren't picking up on it. But yeah, I think that defensively, Terence Crawford is a lot more limited than advertised, and I do think that someone like Josh Taylor and the style that Josh Taylor fights, because Josh Taylor is very good at pivoting and uh, getting on the inside and throwing like real solid hooks and uppercuts. Uh, particularly when he digs him to the body. And I can see him getting to Terence Crawford. I can. I could see Josh Taylor, who's younger and um, fresher than Terence Crawford is at this stage. I could see him getting inside. I could see him working the body. And I could see him maybe roughing Terence Crawford up. And Josh Taylor's so, shown an excellent chin. And if, he, and if he has the same chin and same durability at welterweight as what he does at, at 140... I, I could genuinely see him beating Terence Crawford. I know that that's not the narrative you've been hearing because Terence Crawford, of course, is, um, you know, heralded as the pound for pound number one fighter on the planet. Um, I like I said, I don't agree that he's pound for pound number one personally. I think he's a very good fighter, but I don't think he's pound for pound number one. But I don't see why someone like Josh Taylor in a couple of years' time couldn't beat Terence Crawford. I really don't. Uh, I'm not saying it would happen. Of course, there's every chance that with Taylor being so aggressive and effective on the inside, there's a chance that he might walk onto one of them big, wide, ungamely hooks that Terence Crawford throws, and he might end up in the same situation that, that Kel Brook ended up in. You never know. Or, you know, it, it might be a situation where the fight's in America and um, nothing that Josh Taylor does counts on the scorecards I mean, I mean that's certainly a possibility but I, I think it's a genuinely interesting fight I really do I mean again if you look at Josh Taylor's um championship run at 140 it's definitely a lot more impressive than Terence Crawford's I mean Terence Crawford beat who uh, Postal who, who Josh Taylor also beat um you know he beat um who else was it uh, Indongo was the other guy that, that he beat for the titles um yeah, you know, his his championship run to me at 140 just wasn't as impressive, in my personal opinion, as um, as Terence Crawford's. I mean, fighting the likes of... I mean, those are his unifications, right? His his unifications were against Postal and um, Indongo. Those were the guys that he unified the titles with. Whereas if you look at Josh Taylor and the guy he unified with, you know, he unified with um, Regis Progre, who in my opinion is a considerably better fighter than either of those guys. I mean, we know that Regis Progre is a better fighter than than um, than, than Ndongo because he beat Ndongo. He knocked him out considerably quicker and in more brutal fashion than, than Crawford did. So we know that Regis Progre is a more credible champion um, than, than somebody like Ndongo, who was more of just a one-hit wonder. Um, you know, and like I said, I already mentioned Victor Postal. Well, Josh Taylor also beat Victor Postal. So I don't think it's real. I don't think there's really any question that Josh Taylor's 140 pound championship resume is better than Terence Crawford's. He also beat Ivan Baranchik. So I, I mean, I mean, beating somebody like Baranchik was probably better than most of 
Terence Crawford's um, championship wins at that division. So I just think it's pretty clear to me, if I'm being honest, it, it's it's pretty clear that Josh Taylor has proven enough at this point to be um, a viable opponent, at least, for Terence Crawford. I'm not saying he would beat Terence Crawford right now, but if they were to fight in a couple of years' time, you know, once Taylor potentially becomes undisputed, like if he if Taylor goes in there, right, and goes over to America and does a number on Jose Ramirez, like let's say he goes over there and stops Jose Ramirez easily uh, and then moves up in weight, I don't see why he couldn't beat somebody like Crawford. I don't. I, I would genuinely love to see that fight. I think it's a fascinating fight. I think that Crawford's style will be a very difficult style to um, prepare for because, again, he, he, he's one of these really ungainly fighters. He switches his sense. He, he's very, very rugged and, and has got a tough chin. Um, you know, he, he's very powerful, too. That's one thing we've seen in recent fights from um, Terence Crawford. He's been he's been looking like a monster recently. I mean, being able to knock out the likes of Kavalowskis, for example. So, um I think it's a really good fight. Again, if they were to fight right now, like let's say Josh Taylor were to just jump right up to welterweight and fight him immediately right now, I'd probably favour Crawford just based on experience. Okay, he, he's he's proven at that weight division and he's definitely more experienced. He's had more, more than, I think he's had like triple the amount of fights as what Josh Taylor has as a professional. Both guys were very accomplished amateurs, but Crawford is obviously accomplished and um, experienced a lot more as a professional. So I would definitely favour him now. But in a couple of years' time, if Josh Taylor becomes undisputed and then moves up in weight and proves his chin and his durability at welterweight, I got him beating Terence Crawford. I really have. I, I genuinely think he can do it. Um, you can call me crazy, but we'll see in a couple of years' time if the fight happens. Obviously, there's a chance that Taylor might lose before then. There's a chance that somebody like Sean Porter might come in and might beat... <laughs> he might beat Terence Crawford. You never know. I'm not saying it'll happen, but these these types of fights have a have a history of um, going pear-shaped, don't they? You know, and, and blowing up in smoke when some other fighter comes along, like an Andy Ruiz Jr., and beats... Anthony Joshua, you know, so the so the big unification, undisputed fight with Wilder doesn't happen. You know, they, they end up losing to other fighters. This is what happens with super fights. So you can never take that for granted. But yeah, in a couple of years time, if this fight happens, I think Josh Taylor's got a great chance. And uh, I, may, I might even favor him to win the fight. I'm not even kidding. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. This was just a, a little bit of a, a little bit of speculation. 